John chapter 2. This is why IUIC came to Chicago. Because of fights, because of murder. Listen good. I want to show you why we out here. First John 3 and verse 15. Is that it? Okay. First John chapter 3 verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother, this is why we came to Chicago. Black men hate each other in Chicago. In Memphis, black men hate each other in Memphis. In Miami, black men each other in Miami. In New York, black men hate each other. So she said, run over there. That's why the law enforcement's here. They're doing their job. That's why we need the cops. Because a lot of our people are so wicked, there's extra patrol units in black neighborhoods. Because we disobey God's laws. That's right. Listen good, read it again. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. So how do you get fights and murder in black communities? It starts with hatred for each other in the mind. Right. Read. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. The Bible says, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So what are we here to do? We're here to show you all how to love your neighbor. We're here to show you all what the Bible says about marriage. We're here to show you all who we are. We're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. We're the people of Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why, guess what? That's why a lot of our people are looking for answers. Why? Because of hatred. Because of gun shooting. Because of gangs. Because of drugs. I'm going to show you what the solution is. Listen. Give me Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who is this speaking? That's Christ speaking. Exactly. That's Christ. He answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why would Christ say that? Because what happens in our communities? What you just saw right over there. Bring it up. Bring what it up. you just saw right over there. So you telling me black people don't need this? Bring it up. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. This is what the whole world's been waiting for. See, a lot of y'all don't realize we've been saved for last. The Israelites have been prepared from the beginning. That's why we out here. Let's go. Read it again. But he answered and said, I am not sick. Christ said, I'm not sick. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Blacks and Hispanics. That's right. We are the Israelites of the Bible. I'm going to show you something. Give me Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Listen good to these scriptures. Listen good to these scriptures. Guess what? In the 60s, what happened? What, you want me to use this? Shalom. Test, 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 test. Testing, testing, testing. In the 60s, what happened? The 60s was the civil rights era. What happened in the civil rights? Black people, we were marching for equal rights. And then, who was big during that time? You had something called the Black Panther Party that was there to teach unity. Y'all brothers walking by, listen to this. You had the Black Panther Party. Then guess what else you had? You had the Nation of Islam. You had all sorts of movement. You had SNCC. You had all these movements there to help teach order in our community. And then what happened? A lot of these movements were infiltrated. Now listen, when I said the Israelites were saved for last, this is what I mean. In the 60s, a lot of people didn't know who the Israelites were. But a lot of people are hearing about us now. I'm going to show you why. 1 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 4, verse 9. Bring it I think that's what I want. Listen good. Nope, 1 Corinthians 4 and 9, yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last. All right. What's your question, sis? What's your question? Uh, my question is, like, 
Y'all, y'all, everybody listen good. She got a question. Let's see what she has to say, because we all got questions. What's your question? You say you've been having what? Spirituals? What does that mean? Okay, so they'll read a scripture, okay. Right, different beliefs. Right. If the Bible's closed, right. So you say we need the Bible in order to understand what righteousness is. So let me show you what righteousness is. I'm going to show you something. Sisters, we got to go back to the sisters. We got to. I know y'all don't want to hear it, but we got to go to the black woman. Because, brothers, we were enslaved with the black woman. We were enslaved with the Hispanic sisters. So in order to be redeemed, our brothers got to get right just like the sisters got to get right. So now, I don't even know where I wanted to go. Where are we going? First Corinthians 4 and 9. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. That's where we're going. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. That's where we're going. Brothers, listen good. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 is about men and women. But listen. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Bring it out. The woman. Now, when Moses read this law, he started with the woman. When he says the woman, he's addressing the black, Hispanic, and Native American woman. The woman. Shall not wear it back. Wait, wait, don't go. You ain't gonna go fast. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that. The woman shall not wear. So automatically, as a nation, Moses is talking to us with about our dress code. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, what do women wear that belong to men? Pants. Oh, thank you. Sis, sis, you all right. You all right. Because you know what it is? You just told the truth. You told the truth. You told the truth. Sis, don't worry about it. Sis, don't worry about it. Don't let them distract you. Hold on, hold on. I want to finish the scripture. Let's finish the scriptures for everybody edification. Hold on. Hold on. Let's do it all in order. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the law is teaching us as a nation of people, when you see black and Hispanic women, they all are supposed to dress the same way. That's right. That's right. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. When you see black and Hispanic women, you're supposed to see dresses and skirts and head wraps. That's, That's right. right. That's God's law. When I, in New York, we come from New York, some of us came from Memphis, some of us came from Ohio, Birmingham. In New York, we have, you know New York, all kind of nationalities. When I'm in New York and I go in the East Indian neighborhood, guess what I see? I see a culture, I see a nation. When I go into the Arab community, I see a culture, I see a nation. When I'm at work and I'm in my own community, I see Madness. I see all kind of stuff. Drug dealing, gangs, Muslims, Christians. I'm not saying anything bad about the Muslims or Christians. What I'm saying is, in our community, we are everywhere. We're looking for answers. There isn't one thing as a unit. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What does that mean? That men, yeah, see, they know what sisters know that part. Real quick, what is that showing? The Bible is teaching us that men aren't to wear dresses or skirts or panties or bras. That's the law. Right. Read. For all that do so, the Bible says all women that wear men's clothes, all men that wear women's clothes, are abomination unto the Lord thy God. I didn't make that up. That's the law. That's but listen, I'm going to show you the power behind that law. Romans 7, 14. Sis, don't forget your question. Don't forget your question. What's the power behind when a woman wears a dress or a skirt? She's saying she understands her rightful order. That's, that's right. When a black or Hispanic woman, when she follows God's laws and wearing dresses and skirt, 
She's saying, I understand my order. When a black man is wearing pants, he's saying, I understand my order. What do I mean? Because if a black man is wearing a dress or a skirt, he's telling you he's confused. That's right. Now, why do we read that law? Because of this scripture right here. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. God says there's a spirit behind my laws. God says there's a spirit behind my laws. When a woman wears pants, what spirit does a woman get? A man's spirit. What's the old expression? Hey, Bob, who's wearing the pants in the house? So when a black woman wears pants, what spirit is coming on her? I'm a man. That's right. Remember in the 60s, right. Gloria Steinem led the women's feminist movement. Right. Bring it up. Remember, the women's feminist movement was about equal opportunity. You could go to work in the factory, why can't I go to work in the factory? Right. Okay, how did that turn into women wearing pants? How did that turn into a lot of lesbians? Bring it up. We got deceived. We've been deceived. So listen good now. You understand so far? You understand so far? Our sisters have to wear dresses. That's right. Our sisters have to wear head wraps. You sisters have to understand how to bring the righteous fashion back. That's right. A lot of our sisters don't know how to dress. Leviticus 19:29. Bring it out. A lot Bring of our sisters out. don't know how to dress. Are we right? Is God, sis? You sure you know how to dress? So, sis, I'm asking you a question. You want to roll so far? You one for what? I want to see if you're two for two. You've never dressed immodestly before? Sorry. Have you ever dressed in a way that was inappropriate? Sis, what's your name? What's your name? Okay, sorry. Make up a name. Okay, we're going to show you Sister X. Sister X. Sister X, you telling me. You never wore something that was inappropriate. You never wore a real short mini skirt that when you sat down, you had to pull it down because it was a little too high. Okay, 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 I'm gonna go with that. Sis, have you ever? You see my shoe, Ah, here we go. That was a test. That was a test you passed. No, but sis, it's all right because that shows you understand, you know what? God doesn't want me dressed like that. I gotta change. You're not making an excuse. Read this. Leviticus 19 verse 29. So, sis, from what you get, are we trying to embarrass anybody? Are we showing hatred? No. Are we going to read God's laws? Yes. Is it going to offend people? Yes. So we understand what comes with our job. People are going to hate. People are going to threaten us. But it's all right. Because that's what they did to the apostles. It's going to take threats. It's going to take physical fights. Meaning what? Against us. But guess what? Our job is to teach you the law. Listen, read this. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Bring it out. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Before I read the Bible, I didn't even know these words were in the Bible. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Brother, how do we prostitute our daughters that cause them to be a whore? To put... To put them in a... You no, want no, one for one, now you want one for two. Uh-uh. He said the way they dress. dress. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Right, right. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter. How do you prostitute your daughter? For example, you allow them to reveal all of their body. Bring it out. So how do you prostitute them? Bring it out. Because then they... What happens? When they wear, reveal all of their body, they're showing, I want the world to see what my husband is supposed to see. Right. That's a form of prostitution. Right. Do you see that in black and Hispanic communities? Yes. Where black women dress inappropriate? Yes. We need God's laws. That's right. Y'all brothers, stay and listen. We came all the way from the other side of the world to teach you this. Read it. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Listen good. Y'all look fresh out of high school. Fresh out of high school, and y'all need this, because guess what? The Bible says, I write to you, young men, because you are strong. In the civil rights movement, it was mainly young men. The older men led the march. They led the charge. But a lot of y'all young men, the Lord is looking for soldiers. Stay here and listen to what I'm talking about.
Get me Psalms 9416. I'm going to show you who the Lord is looking for. When I say soldiers, I don't mean guns. No. This is a spiritual war. We're looking for soldiers that's going to go in black communities to win the minds of the people back. That's a soldier. The Lord is looking for the soldier that's going to redeem the minds back. Verse 16. Bring it up. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? God says, God says, God says, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Meaning, who are going to be those brothers that's going to say, no, 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 no. We're not prostituting our sisters in this block. What, what's the, well, a lot of people say we stand for O block. Listen. The Bible's looking for brothers that's going to stand for God's laws. Yes, brothers, listen good. Sisters, listen good. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, stop, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Brothers, listen good. All praises. Y'all brothers right here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over. It's all right. It's all right. All three of y'all. Like, so like Jamaican say, all three of y'all. Come over here. Come over, come over, come over. Come over. Brother, we came for you right after work. I jumped right on the plane and I'm here now. So listen, listen. The reason why we out here is because the Lord is raising up our people. This is what I mean. Give me 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. Listen, you in college or high school? College? What's your college? All right. Guess what? It's fine. But guess what your job is? Your job is to get a good job. Yeah. Your job is to get a good job to help your people. That's right. But guess what? Your priority is, is to wake up your people. That's right. Because guess what? Our people need saving. Right. You understand? You don't, you, you're not pissed off for what you see with your nation. I am. I know you are. That's why you walked over here. Now listen. Read this. Say Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Wait, wait, wait. Why is your brother standing over there? Hey, bro. Drinking the yellow sun kiss. Yo, I got a phone call, brother. I'm sorry, my man. I want you to come on. I got an important phone call. Let me get to you. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, alright, alright. Okay. Where we at? Okay, listen to this. For the weapons of our warfare. So the Bible says the weapons. The weapons. Guess what? It's not talking about the gun. Right. It ain't talking about a switchblade. It's not talking about a Swiss Army knife. That's right. What type of weapon is God talking about? Read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. When he says they're not carnal, meaning he's not talking about an AK-47. He's not talking about an M-16. Right. He's talking about, hold on, give me Hebrews 4 and 12. I'm going to show you the weapon that's dangerous. The most dangerous weapon is the Holy Bible. That's right. The most dangerous weapon is the word of God. That's Listen, right. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So a lot of y'all, guess what? A lot of y'all want to be tough. A lot of us want to be tough. A lot of us. But the Lord is looking for the true soldiers. You understand? But I'm going to show you what that is. Listen. It's a war outside. There's a war outside. But you know what the war is? To win our people over. That's right. That's what the war is. A lot of our people see what? The gun violence. A lot of our people see in killings. It's war. But we're the, we're the brothers to bring solutions. Now I'm going to tell you how all of y'all brothers, why the Lord is calling y'all. Exodus 15.3. Bring it out. Exodus 15.3. Yeah. You grew up in Chicago, all three of y'all? In every area where we grow up, what do you see in our communities? Gangs, violence, drug dealing. That's in Memphis. Black people in Memphis. That's in Chicago. Black people in Chicago. That's in Brooklyn. Black people in Brooklyn. That's in LA. Black people in LA. Why in every area where you see a lot of blacks and Hispanics, there's gangs, there's violence? Why? Because it's a hate. The news, the media teaches us how to hate. Bring it out. Brother, you staying at your cell phone. No, I need you here. 
I need you here. I, all right, all right. I got to make sure. Listen. All right. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Listen, listen. The Lord is a man of war. You hear what the Bible says? The Bible says the Lord is a man of war. The Bible says God always loved war. Listen, read it again. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Now, this is what I want to show you, how you can be a part of the solution. This is how. Now, we're going to go over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Matter of fact, sorry, Revelation 1.14, that's what I want. We're going to make it plain. This is the solution, part of it. Revelation 1 verse 14. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. What nation of people have woolly hair? You say white? Okay, I'm going to go with that. You say white people? Okay, I'm going to go with that. Who do you say? you just saying that because they said that. No, you say that because they said that. Okay, who, what nation of people have woolly hair? Oh, you say, why you say black? Okay. Hey, sis, what nation of people have woolly hair? That's, you heard that? Black people have woolly hair. That's right. You know what woolly hair is? He, but says, says, he didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know at one point. That's why we're here, because a lot of our people don't know. Listen, brother, it's all right, but listen. A lot of us don't realize that woolly hair is the hair right on your head. Listen, read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. I'm reading out of the Bible, and the Bible is describing a certain individual with the hair right on your head. Listen. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, Come on. and his feet. Now this brother, he looks down at his feet. Listen good. And his feet like unto fine brass. This man that we're reading about says his feet was like fine brass. Come on. As if they burned in a furnace. What color is that? Black. Christ was a dark-skinned man. That's right. Christ was a very dark-skinned man. Why did I read this? When Barack Obama got elected, were you happy? You probably busting shots. Okay. But listen, when Barack Obama got elected, were you happy? Were you happy? Were you happy? Why were we happy? Because there you go. There you go. So the Bible is describing, guess what? Jesus Christ is a black man. That's right. So why, when you went to church, why did they show a Caucasian man in the ceiling? Bring it out. Why? That's good. No, that's good that you don't go to church. That's good. You're right. That's right. Brother right there in the back with the green hat. Why is it important? Why is it important for us to read color in the Bible? Because listen, brother, sis, when you understand that, guess what? There are black brothers that did righteous things. You are of the family line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Guess what? You're not going to grow up with a hatred for each other. Are we talking about now a race riot? No. We're saying in our communities, the reason why there's a lot of killings is because there's a hate. So what we have to do, we have to break that image down. On the media, when you see black men, what do you usually see? Gangs, drugs, guns. But when you turn on the news, do you see a black man who owns his business? Do you see a black man that owns companies? No. But are there black men that own it? Yes. But why don't the news show that? It's called damage control. It's called damage control. So why do we come out here? Because we're here to help establish law in order guess what why are the cops out here we need the cops because our people if there were no cops in chicago we all be dead if there were no cops in chicago we'd all be dead give me romans 13. i'm gonna show you something i'm gonna show you something okay guess what guess what i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you something that's why we have to change the minds of our people so that way when the cops report to their station, they're not going to say, hey, I need all y'all to report to Englewood. They ain't going to have to do that. Listen good. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Bring it out. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. 
The Bible says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. What's the higher powers? The most high God. But listen, for there is no power but of God. But there's no power but of God. So what did God ordain? I'm going to show you. The true higher powers is God. But what system is set up here in Chicago? Law enforcement. So guess what? A lot of our brothers have to know how to act. A lot of our brothers have to know how to talk. You understand? Because then guess what? Guess what's going to happen? A lot of cops are going to say what? I don't need to go to Englewood. Right. They got it together. That's right. There's no need for extra foot patrol in Englewood. The crime rate is dropping. That's These right. people are keeping God's laws. Right. That's, right. That's why the IUIC came out here. That's to right. teach God's laws. And then guess what? The cops' jobs are easier. Listen, read it again. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. But there is no power but of God. Listen. The powers that be. The Bible says the powers that be are ordained of God. It's all set up by the Most High God. So let me show you something. Give me Sirach 19 and 29. I want to show you something. It says, listen good, listen good. I'm going to show you something. A lot of our people don't know how to walk, don't know how to talk, don't know how to dress. But guess what? You don't need organizations where your school pays them to come in and teach you that. All you got to do is open the Bible. Listen. Surah, chapter 19, verse 29. Bring it out. A man may be known by his look. The Bible says you could tell a man just off of his look. You could tell a man just off of his look. You could see a man's face and tell either he wants trouble or he's all right. Just off the face. Listen. And one that hath understanding by his countenance. You could look at a man's face and say, that brother look like he knows something. You can look at that brother's face and say, you know what? That brother look like he's clueless. Read. When thou meetest him, a man's attire. The way you dress, God says. And excessive laughter. What comes out of your mouth, God says. And gait. The way you walk, God says. Show what he is. So I could judge you just off your appearance. God is saying the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress shows your character. Shows your character. So what does that mean? Sister shouldn't be walking like this. Sister shouldn't walk like that. And guess what? What is that also saying? Wait, wait, wait. I need y'all to hear this part. Brothers shouldn't be sagging their pants. Brother, oh yeah, you in the look, you looking down. And you looked on that phone with that part, y'all. Look at that phone. Listen, what is that showing? We ain't supposed to be sagging our pants. That's not the dress code that God gave the black man. That's Listen, right. read it again, that part. A man's attire? A man's attire. The way you dress. And excess and gait. The way you walk. Show what he is. So guess what that means? Our brothers have to be taught how to walk. Right. How to talk. Right. How to dress. Right. A lot of y'all may say, I don't need to learn that. No, you do need to learn that. Because that's why it's in the Bible. That's right. You got any questions? Oh, I know you got questions. You got any questions? You got any questions? You got any questions, sir? Any questions? Oh, shoot. You look clueless right now. Hey, you got any questions, brother, right here? Any questions? No questions. Any questions, sis? What's your question? I don't want y'all to leave. Stay and listen. What's your question? Clothing. So are you trying to find a way that you can keep wearing pants and you don't wear dresses and skirts? Okay. Say it again. You saying in the beginning nobody had clothes on their body? Adam and Eve had clothes on their body. Christianity teaches that they were naked. But that's not true. That's Christianity. See, I'm going to show you something. Give me the scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. There's a big difference between the Israelites and Christianity. We teach as it is written. If the Bible says thou shalt not kill, we apply thou shalt not kill. The Bible says the, uh, the, um, thou shalt not commit adultery, we have to obey thou shalt not commit adultery. The Bible says that the Israelites were a dark-skinned people, we teach the Israelites were dark-skinned people. Now, Christianity, Christianity 
you have to go back from 1492 when they came over to this country. Remember, where's the picture? Hold on, I'm gonna show you something, sis. Hold on, hold on. Uh, yes, yes, this, this one right here. Sorry, sis. When you go to court, remember what they said. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you this. Listen to this. Listen to this. I want to show you something. When you go to court, everything you say must be proven. Anytime you go to court, what does the judge ask for? I need documentation. Right. Whatever you say must be proven. Now, everything we teach, we prove it out the Bible. Right. Read this. First Thessalonians 5.21. Prove all things. That's why the Israelites were so strict on not using what comes out of your own head, but reading what the Bible says. Right. Just like in America, when you go to court, what do they say? You disobeyed statute 12 law number 18 section 11 every same thing with god's laws it's the same thing with god's laws read it again prove all things so now christianity taught that adam and eve had no clothes on that's not true they had clothes christianity also teaches when the conquistadors which means conquerors when they came to this side of the world they said the Indians were naked. No, they were not. The Indians were rich. The Indians had gold. The Indians dressed extravagantly. That's right. But they were murdered. They were raped. They stole all their possessions. Then, when schools were set up, they said, we're going to teach that the Indians had no clothes on. Right. But all you got to do is go down to the Chicago library. Bring it out. Read the books on the Indians, and you'll see, wait, wait, wait. They had clothes. That's why if you want to hide something from a black man, where do you put it? In a, In a book. book. Because we don't read. Prior to me understanding the Bible, I didn't read. Listen. Now, where are we going? Okay, Micah chapter 2. Let me show you something. Let me show you something, brother. Micah chapter 2. I want to show you something. What? Huh? Yeah, yeah, we done with it. Yep. Micah chapter 2. You good? Okay. Listen good. Listen good. Everybody listen good. This is why we came out here. To teach our people understanding of God's laws. That's right. That's right. Because brothers, this march of protesting in different cities, that's not what God's looking for. God is looking for the march and keeping his commandments. God is looking for brothers and sisters keeping his laws. That's where your power is. Your power is not in just, I'm a man. It's not that. It's his commandments. Because listen, there's power in keeping God's laws. Listen. Listen good. I'm glad you came. Listen. Micah 2 verse 1. Listen. Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity. And work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. Because, it. because it is in the power of their hand. So why did I read this? Because it says, when the morning is light, they practice the evil. Yes, sir. The mo when the morning is light, they practice the evil. What do I mean? In slavery, sis, were we allowed to read or write? No. Brothers, were we allowed to read or write? No. Brother, were we allowed to read or write? Brothers, were we allowed to read or write? No. So, guess what? This system was able to practice how are we now going to educate African Americans, black men? How now, now that they are fully destroyed, we can teach them how we want to teach them. You understand? So now, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Ten more minutes. Read it again. Micah 2 verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. It is in the power of their hand to practice it. So this is what I mean. We were taught how to hate your neighbor. Bring it out. That's something that was taught to us. Right. We were, why, think about it, brother. Why is it easy for brothers to kill brothers? But East Indians, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, it's a little harder for them to do that because they were taught to be disciplined. They were taught to operate as a nation. They were taught that they have to love their people. But in our communities, we weren't taught that. So guess what? 
That's why the Israelites are here. We're here to teach you how to love your neighbor. That's right. Guess what in LA? A lot of Mexicans hate blacks. A lot of blacks hate Mexicans. Now the Israelites, we go to LA to teach how to apply God's laws. Let me show you something. Give me Exodus 20. We're about to end. Day. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. Today's the Sabbath day. Read. To keep it holy. Come on. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Guess what? God says on the Sabbath day, we are not to buy or sell. Today. Today is supposed to be the day we do not make any money. That's what God says. Now let me show you something about the Bud Billiken Parade. What do you think this parade was about? Bring it out. Money. What do you think this parade was about? Money. Is that money going to go back into Englewood to help the inner city schools? Thank you. That's why we came here. That's right. That's why we came here. Listen, read it again. But the seventh day. Now, guess what? Here's your power. The Bible, guess what? If you get a million of us, Israelites, that say, listen, we keep God's laws. That's that right. Billiken parade, that's, that's right. not going down in our community. Right. Guess what Chicago's going to have to do? They're going to have to bring it somewhere else. That's right. That's, right. that's the power you have in your community. Right. Guess what? In certain Jewish communities in New York, if guess what? If a black man do anything out of line, what's that community going to do? They will make sure None of us step in that community. Why? Because they operate as a unit. That's what the Bible is teaching us. Zephaniah 2 verse 1. God is teaching us how to operate as a unit. God is teaching us law and order. Right. Read this. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. In the school system. Guess what a lot of field trips they do? Brothers, listen. In the school system, guess what a lot of field trips they take our kids to learn about what? Let's see who gets it. In the public school, a lot of our children, because I went on four of them when I was in high school, where do they take kids to learn about? What, 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 what slavery particularly they make sure we learn about? What do you say, brother? What slavery does the public school system in America make sure we all learn about? No, 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 something else. The Jewish Holocaust. In every public school system, what do they make sure we all learn about? The Holocaust. I don't blame them. I don't blame them because they want you to make sure you remember. But guess what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Here's the power behind the Jewish community. Do you think any Jewish community would allow a German to teach their children about the Holocaust? No, that's an insult. So this is what I'm saying. The power that you have is the scripture right here. Gather yourselves together. Yay, gather together, O nation not desire. So you have to gather together in God's laws. That's right. Anything that Chicago wants to do in a black community, they have to go to the community leaders first. What? But listen, the community leaders are the Israelites. We have a school in Chicago. Come to our school so that we will teach you. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Now, we had sisters here earlier. They thought that we hated them. We did it. You thought it too. We got to deliver hard. We got to deliver hard. That's sometimes? No, you can't say all the time. I, okay, you I'm gonna say, no, sis, 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 not all the time, but 98.9% of the time. All right, all right. But sis, guess what? According to the Bible, the law says a black man must marry a black woman. But guess what, sis, don't leave yet. I'm gonna tell you something. Why do a lot of brothers marry white women when they get money? Why? Not more docile. She's going to respect the man. That's it. Now, sis, listen. 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 So why are we here? Because black sisters must learn to respect brothers. They must learn to respect their black men. That's right. Oh, shoot. It's about to start now. You can't. A lot of men have no respect for these sisters nowadays. You can 
if you walking down the street, they won't help you. In the winter time, they won't ask them, do you need help? Or anything. And guess what? So then you all wonder why we got to walk around so macho because and a lot of men, and angry with y'all, because sis. a lot of men do not step up and do what they need to do for us, sisters. So we got to act like we sis. need to wear the sis. But look, I'm going to tell you what it is. No. Sis, sis, sis. Oh, the woman's feminist movement about to start. Hold on. Hold on. Sis. Hold on. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Before you say it, say it. I want you to listen. You know why a lot of black women hate black men? I don't hate black men. Okay, but it's not about you. It's about your nation. It's about your nation. Let me tell you something. A lot of black women hate black men because there's something called the Willie Lynch slave letter. That's why. Have you ever read it? Thank you. All praises. You all right. Let's read this. Matthew 26, verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box. Look, look, we're reading about a black woman. So we're reading about a black woman in the Bible. Read. A very precious ointment. And poured it on his head as he sat at me. Come on. But when his disciples saw it. When the disciples saw what this black woman did. So the Israelites don't hate our black or Hispanic woman, we teach them the law. Read. They had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. Come on. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my face. For body. in that what this woman had did, this black woman came to Christ, poured ointment on his body, because she understood he was going to die. Read. She did it for my burial. Come on. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. So wherever we go, the Israelites, we always give honor to what this sister did. Why? Because she was a righteous sister. That's right. She wasn't a wicked sister. She was a righteous sister. That's right. She honored the prophets. That's right. A lot of our sisters must learn what honor is. That's where a lot of our sisters fail. They don't understand honor. We're going to teach them that. The Bible's going to teach them what honor is. All of our women aren't going to get it together, but the righteous sisters that believe on Christ is going to get it together. That's right. Read. There shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. So Christ said to teach the memorial, sorry, to give a memorial about what this sister did. Why? Because she was righteous. That's she right. honored the prophets of God. That's she right. respected the prophets of God. That's right. Those are the sisters that Christ is dealing with. That's right. The sisters that don't respect the prophets of God, whether they teach hard or whether they bring it out, whatever. There's many ways to teach. At the end of the day, God's laws is what have to be taught. That's That's right. Right. Read. Read that last part again. Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org